Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Orrstown, Pennsylvania. This video is a shorter version of our in-person worship on October 3rd, 2021. I am Pastor Bill DeHass, Interim Pastor of the Congregation, and I'm glad you're here. May you be blessed during this time of worship today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like little children, that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark in the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God created them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they know are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter, and he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the enduring cartoons of our lifetime is the Roadrunner versus Wiley Coyote. While well, the details are always different, the plot is basically the same in every cartoon. Wiley e. Coyote sets a trap to catch the Roadrunner, and it backfires with Wiley e. Coyote ending up in dire shape. That sounds a little bit like the opponents of Jesus in Mark's Gospel. Today we have one of several stories in which Jesus' opponents are trying to trap him. In today's reading, it is the Pharisees. The beginning of the story seems to be about the question of the legality of divorce. They ask Jesus, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Remember, this was a patriarchal society in which only men had rights. Seems simple enough except for two things. First, they are asking Jesus the question to trap him. And second, it is a bogus question because, like the Pharisees, Jesus and everyone within shouting distance that knew the law was aware of the answer. It really isn't a trick question. In fact, Jesus doesn't even answer the question. He asks one instead, what did Moses command you? In other words, what is written in the law? They have the answer everyone knew. In Deuteronomy 24, it is stated that a man can write a certificate of divorce and send her away. The certificate was important because it released the woman from the marriage, and she could marry again, which could be important because in those days, single women did not fare too well economically. The only real argument about the law concerned the circumstances under which the certificate could be issued. Some rabbis were more strict and said only under serious breaches of the marriage, while other rabbis said it could be for anything displeasing the husband. Well, if everyone knew what the answer, including Jesus, knew, one wonders why the Pharisees would ask this, except it was a trap. Where would Jesus weigh in? And also the location of the story is important because Mark has just told us that Jesus had left Galilee and was heading toward Jerusalem. And as such, he was taking the way along the Jordan River and in fact had crossed over to the other side of the Jordan. 
This is the very place where John the Baptist had been active until he was arrested for speaking out against King Herod taking his brother's wife as his own after she was divorced. Seems to me that part of the trap is hoping that Jesus will say the same thing, speak against divorce, and then he might upset Herod enough to be taken away to prison. That seems to be the plan of the Pharisees, except it had the possibility of working about as much as one of Wiley Coyote's plans to catch the roadrunner. Jesus actually turns the tables around on the Pharisees. First, he notes that the commandment in Deuteronomy was not because God is okay with divorce, but because of the hardness of human hearts. However, Jesus says if you go back to Genesis, to the story of creation, you find a different understanding of God's intentions and purposes. And it is greater than any law caused by the hardness of human hearts. Jesus says in the beginning God made them male and female, and the two shall be joined and become one flesh, and therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. I believe what Jesus is saying is this. If you want to talk about the law of God, and what is allowed, okay. But if you want to talk about God's will, that is something else. For God desires that people should come together in marriage so that they can be one flesh. That is, the relationship is greater than the individuals within it. If you want to focus on yourself and your rights and what is permissible, okay. What God is saying, it isn't about you. Marriage, and for that matter, any relationship, is not what you get out of it. It is what you put into it. That is the ideal. But of course, we live in a world with the hardness of human hearts, and not just some humans, but all. I don't come to this sermon speaking from a point of self-righteousness, because one of the lines on my life's resume is, divorce. I can speak from experience about the hardness of human hearts and how that not only affects the two people, but a myriad of others around. That's the thing. We think that our actions have little effect on others and the world around us. We rationalize that if we are better off, so is everyone else. The fact is that the hardness of our hearts has consequences. And I know that not by pointing a finger at anyone else, but from my own life. Thankfully, Jesus did not fall into the trap of the Pharisees. Instead, Jesus does not just teach about the, human, the hardness of human hearts, but he does something about it. As I said earlier, Jesus in this story is on his way to Jerusalem. And he will go there to fulfill God's will, to be killed and to be raised in three days. He will take away the hardness of human hearts, or in more churchy talk, he takes away the sin of the world. Hardness of hearts will not have the last word over God. That frees us, even amidst the hardness of our hearts, to be faithful in our commitments, and to be more about what God wills than what my rights are. You can always ask what is permitted, but we also ought to ask, what does God desire? The one situation I always think about in the life of any congregation is that there's a huge difference between being a member of the church and being a follower of Jesus. Hopefully everyone is both. To be a member of a church, there is a bare minimum. Most Lutheran churches state that active members commune or contribute uh, once every year or two years or something along those lines. That is what is permitted. That's the minimum. Is that what God desires? I can't think so. Jesus' call to come and follow can't be once every two years. Lastly and briefly, there is also the words and the actions of Jesus here that seek to protect the most vulnerable people in society, in this case in his day, divorced women. Along with widows and aliens, they were among the most vulnerable people then. And while perhaps overlooked by many, they were not and are not by Jesus. In many ways, the church has not fared a lot better over the years. The rich and powerful have more 
uh, often been the ones of importance in the church. However, the reality of the kingdom of God is the opposite. Here, the weak, the poor, the ones without social status, the ones who have nothing to offer are of ultimate importance. Here, everyone is equal. Here, everyone is valued. The church still has much to learn and much to offer, but it cannot do so or be so with values shaped only by the world. Jesus shows us a different way, a different family, a different reality. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, you have raised up faithful leaders throughout history. Empower those discerning a call to ministry and all seminarians that they may continue to be formed for the sake of the gospel. You have established a diverse and beautiful creation. Revive the declining species and preserve endangered lands. Cultivate in us a sense of wonder for the world you created. You desire for us not to be alone and to live in community with one another. Strengthen relationships between nations and peoples that we celebrate and support one human family. You share in our experiences and struggles. Bless all who live with any mental or physical disability. Inspire creative community spaces and environments that are accessible and hospitable. You have established and nourished relationships that extend beyond those gathered in the church today. Bless members who can no longer travel to worship and remind us of their continued role in this community of faith. You promise eternal life to all your children. Thank you for the people of faith who have gone before us and strengthen our trust we have in you. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And hear us now as we pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you.